My brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Church celebrates the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's not hard to derive the, the origin of this date of September 8th. It follows exactly nine months after the day that we celebrate the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception on December 8th. And so, and it would lead one to believe that this feast is actually the newer of the two when it is more ancient even than the celebration of the Immaculate Conception. The, the celebration of the Feast of the Nativity of Mary originated in the East in the early centuries and eventually made its way to the West. Its founding of the date upon September 8th had to do with the, the, the start of the liturgical year. But regardless of the traditions uh, around the dates that we celebrate, this day is one that's important. We celebrate the, the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, her very birth, because she is the one that, that through whom the, the bringing of the, the Christ light into the world takes place. And so we hear, uh, as we know, the, the no, no details of, of Mary's childhood, of her origin, are presented to us in the Gospels themselves. They're very Christocentric. They're centered on Christ. And yet there's traditions associated with the Blessed Virgin Mary. There's the Proto-Evangelion of James, which is an apocryphal document from which some of the tradition around Mary and her parents, Joachim and Anne, comes from. It's not a canonical historical document. It's just where some of the tradition is associated. And so on this day, we, we hear about the Nativity of Mary and yet, the Gospel account tells us about the birth of Jesus. And of course, Mary and Jesus can, are always linked in this sacred way. But the theme I'd like to point out today is how the Gospel passage, and it's one that sometimes our eyes can glaze over when we hear this genealogy of Jesus at the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew. We hear just a list, a succession of names upon names upon names upon names. And eventually it gets to the end of Joseph, the husband of Mary, who is you know, the, the mother of Jesus. And then we hear this is how the birth of Jesus came about. It seems like, okay, did we need to sit through that list of names? And yet the reason why it's important is this. It reminds us of how God's salvation has been written throughout human history, indiscernible to the human eye. And if we go to the tradition of Mary's parents, Joachim and Anne, we, we hear that they were infertile, unable to conceive, and like other kind of miraculous births in the scriptures, they prayed uh, even in their age for, you know, for, for God to give them a miracle that they could conceive a child. And so you can imagine with that anticipation and longing how overjoyed they were for the birth of Mary. And yet, this is only a drop in the bucket compared to the anticipation of creation. From the time of the fall in the garden, right after creation, man would have original sin, and from that, all of creation is waiting for redemption, for the coming of the Savior. And so, in that genealogy of names, we have in each of those you know, lines is a lifetime. For us, that, that's more than we can conceive, just our own lifetime, and yet, generation after generation after generation after generation, the Lord in his grace and his providence is preparing his salvation. It's all in his sight, all in his will, all in his plan. And so, as we look with anticipation for smaller moments, God and creation are all awaiting the overarching salvation, the big moment, the coming of Christ, and so the birth of Mary uh, is this great moment pointing uh, towards the dawn of salvation. It's the birth of a child, yes, but it points to something so much more. And so I say all of this as a reminder to us that often the ways of God escape us. He's so much bigger than we are. And when we look to him, where is God in all this? Whether in the events of my own life, we see the, the struggles of the world, we say, where is God? Where is God at work in this? And yet, it's so much bigger than we can grasp. And our tiny breath of life and our, and our tiny intelligence, we can't grasp what God has prepared for those who love him. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may we model ourselves after the Blessed Virgin Mary, who above all puts her trust in the Lord and his promises. 
And may we have renewed confidence and faith that even when we can't discern what God is doing, that he has great things prepared for those who love him. May God bless you.